Hold on, Tim, you literally just put out a video, every game in my collection played, zero games unplayed. How are you doing unboxing already? I know, I know y'all, I'm very, very self-aware. However, <laughs> at least on that one moment, I am self-aware. Look, when I started that video, these games just started to come in. So we're gonna put this on a separate pile, but as of right now, we're gonna add some brand new games to the collection and open up some really fun things. So I hope you all are doing well. It's good to see you Wolfpack. Let's get started to open up some brand new games. Package number one today. Ooh, now thank you so much to Genius Games for sending this one over to me, but I've been very interested in like their whole science lines, science line of games in general because coming from a science background, of course, it's so fun to see these themes being used. Actually, I've seen even posts from like science teachers or just teachers in general putting these educational type games in class. I wish that when I was in school, there was a whole shelf of board games because then I would just spend all day after class is over just playing games with my friends too because this would have been so much fun back then don't you agree if anything we might have just had like chess in our class or checkers and if anything i added in chess into my own lab when i was teaching back then so that's uh that was my story behind that it's also interesting too that it says here is from the journal of cell science i'm wondering if that's the real journal that like looked over this game or if it was just like a company that that's producing games alongside this, like a distributor or something, or if it's a real peer reviewed journal, that'd be fun. Number two, now this one I ordered on my own. So yes, I did order this before I had started doing the other videos. All right, box number two. Oh yes, yes, it's here. Okay, what did I get, you ask? Well, I first wanted to order Deadly Mask because this right here is a five to six player expansion to Black Rose Wars Rebirth. And like I said, I've been really wanting to try this at a higher player count. I feel like once everyone knows the game, it'd be much faster anyway. And honestly, like the downtime in a three to four player game isn't that bad to begin with, for what I think at least. So I really wanted to see what it'd be like to add in some more mages to the mix. And that's why I wanted Deadly Mask along with all the other expansions. I've already gone through half of the expansions for Rebirth already, so I know that I'm gonna be diving to the other ones as well because this is such, such a fun game. Apocalypse, and we also got some other new boxes here. I think I have nearly like everything that comes with Rebirth now, so I'm adding in Dread Forge. This one right here is supposed to add in, let's see, more, a brand new spell of, a brand new school of spell cards, the Forge spell cards, which is the reason why I got this one. And then I also got, see what's next. This one is the Seal of Fire. This one adds in more personal spell cards, a forgotten spell card, which are the really crazy ones, and some more familiar cards. But I think um, it adds in this giant phoenix that I don't know if it adds as an avatar or like as a pet or something, but I saw the phoenix and I'm like, okay, I want that. And then to complete the collection, because I'm being a total completionist right now for Rebirth, and that is Gaia Reborn. So Guy Reborn here adds in yet another school of magic, the Geomancy School of Magic cards. And that's exactly why I wanted this one. See that acrylic model right there? Ooh, love that. Box number three, you know what? I'll be dead honest, okay? When this box came in, that particular game, I just couldn't wait and I opened it immediately, but I didn't open the actual shrink wrap of the game. And I still want to show you what game it was. Two games that I already opened. Next one, number three is Slay the Spire. This one I also purchased on my own, of course, the collector's edition because I just can't. Apparently I don't have enough responsibility to just get the retail edition. So here I am with Slay the Spire, the collector's edition. I didn't get the neoprene mat or any of the other stuff. So the reason why I backed this game way back when was because I did download the app like around the time of this campaign went live, but then I didn't really play it fully, like in full and really immerse myself into the whole gameplay until our recent trip to Europe. And then on the train there, I was just so addicted to playing Slay the Spire the entire time. I like unlocked three of the classes so far. I'm still missing the final class. I don't even know how to unlock the final class on the actual app. I've been playing this game all the time. If you've played Slay the Spire, which I'm sure many, many of you have, it is a very addicting game because you're constantly climbing the tower. But then as you do, you have very meaningful choices every step of the way. And there are also different asymmetrical classes that have different abilities. So it's a whole card building aspect to the app and also 
to the game itself. And I've also heard many good things about this one so far. So I am a thousand percent excited to dive into this solo game. Um, it is also cooperative too, but it's something I'm definitely gonna be playing solo for sure. And I also got the exclusives as well. This one comes with a merchant play mat, the three heart keys, some foil cards, some blank cards, and also a claw pack as well. Number three, Slay the Spire. And the other one that I also opened already is Dog Park New Tricks. I love that they did an expansion already to Dog Park because it really adds some more complexity to it. And also comes with some more Dogs of the World expansion. And this reminds me a lot of Wingspan where Wingspan is going to like different territories and stuff. So this is a really good family game. And I love that they're expanding globally to adding in some dog packs here and to add in some, hopefully some new interesting complexity to this as well, because I think the base game is really fun for family overall. But if you want to add in some more different mechanics, some ways to spice up the gameplay, I think this is a great option for that. So I can't wait to be diving into that one once I play some more family games with Dog Park. Got a couple more for you to open the smallest one, but yet almost the heaviest one. This is pure metal here. So I've talked about this upgrade in a previous video that I'll link right up here in case you want to see that. But let me tell you now, this is like one of my new favorite board game upgrades because the quality behind this is next level for resources. So what this is, this is from Tinkertown Games. Thank you so much Tinkertown Games for sending this over. I absolutely am a huge, huge fan of the quality of these resources. This first one is for Wormspan. This right here is probably one of the most satisfying resources ever in any game and that is gold bars. Let's take some out. They're like dense, they're heavy, they're thick, they're shiny. They also have a nice little just overall texture to them. I love these gold bars. Like you, you don't even have to use it only for Wormspan, you can use it for any other game that has gold bars, but I mean, this is perfect for Wormspan. Let's look at what else they got. You also got the meat and the gems for the game. Oh, and of course, you know, Wormspan or Wingspan isn't complete without these. Check out all the different colors for the Wormspan eggs. Like I can't even imagine playing the game now without using these metal resources. Like look at these eggs. You have gold, brass, silver, kind of like an onyx slash charcoal color. Oh my goodness, these are just unreal texture. Like there's so much weight, so much heft to these. Like just holding this like feels like a dumbbell in a good way. And I love these resources. Like I would love to see this type of texture being used for future board game resources in general. I feel like Tinkertown game is going to like pop off once people see and understand like how the quality of these resources are. Like they're so nice and I just, there's such a premium luxurious feel to them that I just like, this is my favorite type of resources right now, which is like straight up metal, you know? We also have some more tokens. I think these right here are used for the White Castle by Devere. Now, Bitoku is on my radar to be doing a review of. I love that game. It's really fun worker placement game. A lot of good resource management, very, very heavy. And the White Castle, I think was also by Devere too. That one looks incredibly fun. It's definitely on my next like shopping list, like immediately, like pretty up there on my next to buy list too. So these are some tokens I think to be used for that game. Like see, even the coins, like classic coins like this, look at this. Just such a beautiful deluxe feel to these. But they also included some board game clips. I don't know how to use these just yet, but I'm assuming like if there's a magnet somewhere, maybe these can magnetize them and hold some cards and stuff. So yeah, if you're interested in any of these resources, I will leave links to it down below. They're not affiliated or anything, but still like definitely check these out to give them a look because they are some very, very premium resources. And there's way more games than just Wormspan and White Castle here. They have a ton of options, but Wormspan of course is definitely one of my favorite ones from what you can see here. Ugh, this one right here is probably the actual weight of a dumbbell. So the next one also, since we're on the topic of resources, is yet another set of fancy resources. Black box, black packaging, says Tim all over it. Look, just solid color, black feel, oof. Ooh. Oof, look at that. The Pirate Gold Poker Set. So this also was sent over to me by Pirate Gold. Thank you so much for sending these over. Speaking of luxurious resources, like look at these crazy coins. 
We've got brass coins, charcoal colored. We've got some solid gold coins. Like these are straight up doubloons. Silver coins. Seeing these coins really makes me like, just want to host like a poker night just for fun. Oh, speaking of poker, actually, they even included their own deck of cards, the Pirate Gold Poker Set. Oh, look at this one. There's even little octopus. I, I think this is more so like supposed to be the Kraken, maybe even a first player token that can use for games. You know what, seeing Joker right now reminds me of this show that I've watched recently, Alice in Borderland. Have any of you seen Alice in Borderland? Because that show is crazy. And yeah, that's exactly what it reminds me of right now. Ooh, look at that shuffling. I wish I knew some cardistry here because this right here would look so good if I knew any amount of cardistry, just like flipping cards around and like making it crazy. That was one skill that I tried to develop actually during quarantine was cardistry because I felt like it would be so good to use in videos. Like just knowing cardistry, be able to like flip cards and stuff like that. Imagine that combined with the commercial that I'm doing. Oh, it looks so good. If only I knew. Maybe one day. <laughs> Links to this down below in case you're interested in Pirate Gold. Pirate Gold, thank you so much for sending this over. Absolutely love the deluxe feel of this. You know, I'm a sucker for this kind of material. So seeing this, it's poker night. Or what are some other pirate themed? I actually asked this on Twitter the other day because I was totally interested. I don't think I have too many. I don't have any pirate themed games yet, but I know people mentioned Maracaibo and like Dead Man Doubloons. I did have that one point, but I didn't really like that game. That's why I didn't bother keeping it. But some other games with some pirate themed coins would be beautiful for this or classic poker night. The biggest box of the day comes from Lucky Duck. What is in here? Ooh, okay, a lot of different titles here. Holy smokes. Ooh, Kingdom Rush. This was an older title that I covered on my channel. I think I did a tutorial for this back in the day. But Kingdom Rush, honestly, like on my phone, is played all the time. This is by far like my favorite ever game app. If you've never played Kingdom Rush, you need to play this game like on your phone too because it is so ridiculously good. This is like the best ever tower defense game. It is so addicting. I played every single version of it and I saw that they're also releasing a Kingdom Rush 4 very, very soon. They've been doing a lot of promos for that and it looks so epic. Brand new heroes, new skills, new talents and everything like that. So I'm excited to dive into Elemental Uprising. I think they've added a ton of new features since the last time I played Kingdom Rush. So I can't wait to dive into this one. Next up is Divinus. Now this one, I don't know anything about this game. Let's see here. Divinus, Divinus is a competitive 12 scenario legacy tile laying dice crafting digital hybrid game. That's what Lucky Duck is like totally known for. They have a ton of digital hybrid games. The fate of Greece and your own ascension to godhood. Ooh, that last line right there is a great hook for me. Love the theme behind this one. So the next one, two, three, four boxes. Here is Destinies. Now this one has a ton of expansions actually. So I covered this one, one of the expansions for it recently for Lucky Duck. And then just want to give a huge thank you to Devin if you're watching this video. Thank you for sending this over with all the expansions. Now I can totally play this game and its campaign and all its glory with so many different expansions to dive into. It's even like a 2v2 expansion apparently. That's awesome. I actually thought it was a solo game slash co-op the whole time, but now there's a now there's a competitive mode. Now you're speaking. Now you're talking my language here. With that said, what do we have today? We got Cytosis. What was unboxed today? I bring a lot of stuff in frame. There it goes. Let's see. One. I'm gonna count this as one. Rebirth is one. So everything related to one game is one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven new games added to the collection just like that. See, this is how I can never have zero games in my unplayed collection. It's not a bad problem. Let me go ahead and premise that right now. So I am stoked, beyond stoked to dive into all these games. I think the first one I'm going to go into is probably going to be Slay the Spire. And maybe I'm not going to get Black Rose Wars played anytime soon, but probably Slay the Spire since it is a solo game. That's probably going to be my first one, followed by probably Destinies a little bit after that. So anyways, thank you all so much for hanging out with me and thank you to everyone who has sent me things. I appreciate it so much. And of course, Wolfpack, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today as we unbox some brand new games to add to the collection. Thank you all so much for watching, for hanging out, and I will see you all 
in the next one, whichever one that's going to be. I have no idea yet. I'll see y'all later.